By the year 2030, it's estimated that more than one out of every five people in the United States will be older than 65. At the same time, people around the world are expected to live longer with the average age reaching 73 and a third by 2050. As a larger portion of the population moves into retirement, there are a lot of big questions popping up. Folks are wondering how much they need to save before they can actually retire comfortably, how much money they can safely spend without running out, and whether or not programs like Social Security will still be around to support them when it's their turn to retire. But before we get into today's video, my name is Casey McEwen, and if you want to thrive financially, this channel is the place for you. So hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more future content. Amidst all of these financial concerns, there's a big retirement mistake that often goes unnoticed, and it's not directly related to money. This mistake is about not knowing when enough is truly enough, leading to never-ending pursuit of more wealth. It's a common trap driven by societal pressures to accumulate wealth that can have a negative impact on people's quality of life and their decisions about when to retire. To be honest with you guys, my mother is a middle school PE teacher. She is north of the age of 65, and my father's been retired for really the last five years, but unfortunately, as I think we all can probably understand, education is not the best paying profession. And on top of that, she didn't really put any money aside when you have four different kids, as well as a lifestyle that you wanna keep up. There wasn't a ton of money that she could save on a monthly basis. Now, my dad has enough saved for retirement, and they're obviously still married, so he's gonna have enough for her to be able to retire on, as well as social security and her likely pension that she gets. But the real reason that she's teaching at the age of north of 65 is because she actually looked in her 50s at what her retirement would be looking like maybe in her late 50s, early 60s, and it wasn't nearly as much as she had hoped. And at this point in her late 50s, this is a profession that she had done for going on north of 30 years, to then look at your retirement and realize, hey, I'm not gonna be able to retire at 62. I actually gotta work till I'm 65, maybe 68. I mean, above and beyond that, I can't tell you how many stories my father has already told me about individuals that he used to work with that wound up retiring and then just passing away a few years later. So let's break this down a little bit further. Imagine someone who has worked their entire life like my dad, diligently saved money, growing their 401k and investing wisely. When it's finally time to retire though, they find it a bit challenging to shift gears from saving to spending. This difficulty is compounded by the fact that retirement often brings a lot more free time. Instead of enjoying this newfound freedom though, many people fall back into the trap of believing they need even more money to fill their days, perpetuating the cycle of wanting more. Interestingly enough though, the way most Americans spend their retirement doesn't necessarily match up with these financial anxieties. Research has shown that contrary to dreams of traveling the world or engaging in expensive hobbies, the average retiree spends a significant portion of their time engaging in simple leisurely activities like resting, sleeping, and yes, watching TV. This discrepancy between expectation and reality highlights the importance of understanding what truly brings happiness and satisfaction in retirement. Now, over the course of the last seven years, my retirement in my future kind of has taking a pretty drastic change. I've gone from making $50,000 a year with a master's degree as a high school teacher, kind of trying to emulate the amount of time my mother was around her kids or around me, but also now by getting into real estate, I have exponentially grown my income, allowing me to work from home, allowing me to film this video from home, allowing myself to earn a considerable amount more income and also have the opportunity to be around much more than my dad was. Now only 34 right now with a baby on the way, coming this summer. My intention is to have a pretty good sized family, but I wanna be around my family as often, if not more than my mother was. My mother was a public educator and she was there basically before school. And as soon as school ended, she was there as well. Now on the flip side, my dad often traveled overseas. He was gone for months at a time. And if he was by chance at home, he was probably working a shift that didn't really correlate with kind of watching the kids. I know a lot of the time it was waking dad up for dinner. He woke up, had dinner, and then went right back to bed because he had a night shift or a midday shift or maybe a day shift. He had essentially three different shifts that really didn't correlate all that well with raising children. So my mom was around the kids a lot. My dad wasn't necessarily. So my goal over the next five to 10 years is really to set myself up even more than I already have for technically retirement in my 40s. Now, again, as I mentioned earlier, my dad retired at the age of 60 and my mom going to retire in her late 60s. My goal is to be financially free in my early 40s that if I want to quote 
retire. I have the opportunity to attend all of my kids sporting events, all of their drama, art, or any kind of school activities. I'm not going to be limited by, you know, work that's going to be setting me back, you know, maybe in a foreign country or in a sense 40 to 60 hours a week. I'm going to be in a position to where I can work as little or as much as I want and be around my family. Now I'm 34 now. It gives me about six years left to hit my 40s and to technically be financially secure or financially free by my 40s and spend as much time with my family and kids. But I also have started this YouTube channel with the intent to help you, regardless if you're 18, maybe you're 14, starting your first paid position ever. Maybe you're 40 years old and you want to build for retirement, or maybe you're in your 60s and just need any kind of financial advice whatsoever. That's what this channel is for. So again, if you haven't hit that like button or hit subscribe, I would love if you could do so. But anyways, let's consider some common scenarios as examples. Imagine someone growing up in a family that emphasized saving and frugality above all else. This person might reach retirement with a substantial nest egg, but find themselves unable to kind of enjoy retirement itself, sticking to more of a minimalist lifestyle out of habit rather than necessity. Or consider the goal-oriented individual who spends their entire career kind of chasing the next promotion, the bigger paycheck, the larger house, only to find that achievement feels less satisfying than the last. This phenomenon known as hedonic adaptation suggests that our happiness levels tend to return to a baseline after significant life changes or achievements. So how much do you really need to retire, guys? Financial experts often cite that the 4% rule as a guideline, suggesting that withdrawing about 4% of your retirement savings each year should sustain kind of through a 30-year retirement. This rule based on a historic market performance assumes a balanced portfolio of both stocks and bonds as well as real estate, but beyond Beyond the numbers, it's crucial to reflect on what makes life fulfilling for you. And you really gotta ask yourself at the end of the day, guys, regardless if you're in your 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, or 60s, retirement will eventually come. What are your goals with retirement? What activities bring you joy? Are you an individual that's going to continue to spend the same way in retirement as you're spending as an individual that is employed or working? I can tell you wholeheartedly, my spending is going to kind of take a pretty large increase up as I continue to grow my business. As I get closer to retirement, not necessarily the available retirement that I may have in my 40s, but we're talking 50s or 60s, I'm certainly not gonna be in the same kind of spending spree that I currently am now. Not that I'm trying to seek the next paycheck or trying to seek out the next big house, but with the income that I'm earning now, a lot of what I'm doing as far as spending is putting towards investments or putting it in my Roth IRA or putting it in my SEP IRA. Obviously, if I'm in my 50s or 60s, I'm not going to be earning income with the intent to put it away for retirement. I'm gonna likely be spending the retirement money that I've earned over the course of the last 20 to 25 years. Now, additionally, considering your expenses and lifestyle choices can kind of help tailor your retirement savings plan. Fidelity's retirement income replacement ratio suggests aiming to replace a certain percentage of your pre-retirement income based on your earnings. This guideline helps you estimate how much you'll need annually to maintain your desired lifestyle in retirement. While financial planning is a crucial aspect of preparing for retirement, equally important is understanding your personal definition of what is exactly enough. By focusing on what truly matters to you, rather than chasing an ever-increasing wealth target, that's not only financially secure, but also rich in happiness and satisfaction. Retirement planning isn't just about hitting a number, it's about creating a life that feels fulfilling and rewarding for yourself. Now, if you watch this video from start to finish, it may seem a little weird hearing about retirement from an individual that is 34 years old. Maybe you're in your early 20s and wondering why an individual in his 30s is talking about retirement. Well, I'll be honest with you guys, Retirement comes a lot sooner than people think. I was actually having this conversation just the other day with a friend that I went to high school with. They actually had a child just a year out of high school and that individual is now in high school themselves. I'm an individual that is having a child or my first child at 34. I'm gonna have a baby the same time a friend of mine that I went to high school with has a child graduating high school. Meaning if I would have had a child basically right out of high school, I would have a grown adult nearly today. The year Years zero through 17 certainly feel way slower than the years 17 to 34. And I know obviously as I get older, the ages from 34 to 50 are gonna absolutely fly by. That's gonna put all of my kids nearly out of high school. 
and it's gonna put me in a position where I'm an empty nester. I'm an individual with a wife and myself looking at essentially what is real retirement, not retirement in the financial aspect to where I can go to my kids' baseball games. I'm talking actual retirement where I've got the freedom to travel, I've got the freedom to do really anything and everything I want because all the kids are grown up and I'm now in my 50s. It comes faster than you know it, so start preparing now while you still have time. Thanks again for watching guys. Again, as I've stated a couple times already in this video, make sure you hit that like button, make sure you hit subscribe and stay tuned for the next video.